Spencer introduce a new concept. He now comes and moves from the blue tent, dividing the country into sheep and goats. Sheep meaning your UPP, your eat grass, and goats mean that you put you in a desert, you eat nothing. Then Bill Daniel stood up in this country and told all of you here in Antigua and Barbara, all of us, tell the Prime Minister he must rule with an iron fist. He did not say rule according to the laws of Antigua and Barbuda. He said you must rule with an iron fist like Saddam Hussein and all those dictators in the world. I tell you sometimes, you all in this half-witted, dunce here, people from in this country who never had a proper job in their lives and as soon as they become ministers, they become little gods. Teach you that if you are their slaves, they are supposed to be your servant and then when they elected, they become your masters. We are going to bring that to an end and march the twelve. Then, just recently, Brother B made a statement, and let me tell you something. That statement Brother B made was not condemned by the UPP party. It was not condemned by the Christian Council. It was not condemned by the, cha condemned by the Chamber of Commerce. All of them remained silent. But what Brother B said, is exactly what Baldwin Spencer and the whole gang have in their minds. And I'm here to remind you tonight because as far as I'm concerned, I will tell you this, I yield no turf to anybody who wants to deny me my freedom in this Antigua and Barbuda. Not a man would ever succeed in denying me my, my, my freedom. And I want to urge you tonight that on Thursday, the Deliverance March is about this very issue. Brother B said that when the UPP wins and the form government, which will not happen, that he is going to go to his ministry and he is going to hold up all the bad people and send them home and finish Buddhism once and for all. You all don't remember man so said that B.C. Bird was to be put in the dustbin of history. You all don't remember that. You all don't remember the greatest hero that we have had in this in our lives in Antigua and Barbuda. The man who sacrificed everything. Man so said that he must be put in the dustbin of history. Brother B, a little boy from Bowlands. Now he's such a big man that he's going to say to you that if the UPP wins and you have a job with the government that you pay taxes, they're going to send you home so you don't have any money to feed your children, to take care of your family. That is the politics that you're faced with today. I want to make it clear, no government, no minister has any right to take bread off the table of anybody in this country. And it's for this reason that you must come to the march on Thursday. I want to see 10,000 people on the streets of St. John's on Thursday to deliver Antigua and Barbuda from the hands of these wretched men. The other thing that you all must not take lightly, never in the history of the entire Commonwealth have we ever seen what Barbuda Spencer and his gang did to go back to Parliament. They dissolved Parliament and the Constitution says that the only way you can recall parliament is if there is an emergency. But this vengeful, vindictive bunch of men wanted to get 
Adam invested his life yes. and they went to parliament. Yes. But it backfired. Because what they wanted to do was to say to the Antigua and Barbuda people, listen, we are here to rescue your lands for you. But let me tell you something. I tell you how foolish the government is. All Stanford business are ongoing enterprises. And it's no piece of land to be built upon. They are businesses. And if the government take over those businesses, they have a responsibility to pay the workers and to maintain the assets of those countries, of those companies. You tell me a government that can't pay wages just last week, how are they going to find the money to do all those things? They can't. But that was done in order to confuse your mind. I, I am confident that given the experience you have had over the last five years, there is absolutely no way the UPP will fool the people of Antigua and Barbuda again. You have to tell me tonight, are you going to allow the UPP to fool you again? I noticed something in Antigua. I've fought many elections, but I've never seen the involvement of young people more than this particular election. And let me give a hand of a round of applause to our young people. The UPP has made you angry. The UPP has threatened your future, and you have stepped forward to grab your future. And I want to congratulate you all. But let me say this. They have some little ones. Seven and eight year olds. That are now even becoming involved in politics. And you want me to tell you why? I'm going to tell you all why. Because I will tell you this. Very few things miss me in politics. What is happening in Antigua and Barbuda with the families? The hardship. The young children are hearing their parents and when you say you don't have money to buy food when things are hard, the 70 and 80 year olds are hearing it. And I'm seeing a lot of little children standing up now and they're saying, labor, 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 labor. I see little children come up to me, they want to get shot. Well, let me say this. When you hear the politics get so bad that the children of seven and eight, instead of learning to read and write, have to be thinking that they have got to understand the suffering of their parents. Some of them don't have food. When the young child said to her mother, listen to me, I am going to eat less because I know you don't have enough food in the house for us. Can you imagine that? A 10 year old child telling the mother, I am going to eat less because you can't buy enough food to feed us. These are the issues. And let me tell you something, comments. Let me tell all of you here, those of you who might still be looking for a message. Many times in our political experience, we have to deal with the issue of whether or not a government is going to engage in programs to develop you, your children, let you earn some money to hold on to your home, let you earn some money so that you can educate your child. But the politics we have today goes beyond that. It's the first time in the history of Antigua and Barbuda that our very liberty is being threatened in this country. You have some officers in government that will say to you point blank, you can't get on job in this government because you support Labour Party. You can't come on this job if you will leg. What kind of country we have? Are we all ready to take that? Well, I want to say, I am confident that the Antigua Labour Party has a 